Uh, my name is Sonu Shivdasani. I'm the CEO of Six Senses. Well, thanks for joining us on Breaking Trevenue, Sonu. This morning you're on a panel talking about uh, the changing climate. Yeah. Uh, yes, changing values. Um, yes, no, it was a great, great, great panel, um, some great discussions. And uh, it, was, it was reassuring because the view was that people are becoming more conscientious. They're thinking about how they spend their money. And that appeals very much to, um, um, you know, what, what Six Senses does appeals very much to them because, you know, Six Senses' core purpose is to create enlightening um, and innovative experiences that rejuvenate our clients love of slow life and slow life is an acronym for sustainable local organic wholesome learning inspiring fun experiences so you know we we sort of our catchphrase is slow life and um, you know to encapsulate we believe we're delivering intelligent luxury which is really challenging and questioning what is luxurious to a consumer living in a city because people's backgrounds and contexts have totally changed from the people in the 19th and 20th century who defined the traditional norms of luxury. Um, so I think luxury is still a good word. Um, I sort of disagreed slightly with um, our moderator. I believe that luxury is a good word, but what luxury means is you're creating something that is rare, but, um, but actually true. It's what people really want. Um, so I, I, I think that's important. But I think um, what, what I think was being alluded to was the conventional norm of luxury, you know, conspicuous consumption, you know, marble floors and gold taps and all of that. And that's not what Six Sense is about. You know, intelligent luxury is about, you know, if you're a busy executive traveling three or four hundred hours a year, um, it's nice to go to a resort where the philosophy is no news, no shoes. So, you know, the restaurant actually has sand, so you feel comfortable going in Bermuda shorts and bare feet so that when you're packing you're not packing for others you're not packing black shoes to impress others uh, you're actually packing sports shoes for your time in the gym or your hiking ex excursion or your uh, you know your your windsurfing experience and so on so you're actually packing shoes for your, yourself personally and you're focusing more on the DVDs and the books rather than the jackets and the ties so you know that's a luxury for people who are traveling 400 hours a year because then they're already even before they've even got to us they already, the holidays already started, you know, when they get the suitcase out and they think about what they're packing. So, so I think that's, you know, um, intelligent luxury, really thinking and challenging. Like, for example, every six sense of property has an organic vegetable garden. And we do that for a sustainable point of view in terms of low food miles. But also, um, it's, um, you know, the salads are very fresh and you can't get that in London. You can have a, an 82 Chateau Mouton or a Shield either at one of our resorts or in London but you can't have an organic salad like a rocket salad that was sitting in the garden just two hours before um, because you know most freshly tossed garden greens um, have traveled uh, you know a, a good two or three days before it gets onto a consumer's plate in in a city so so that's what we mean by intelligent luxury and I think people are starting to value that you know and they're, they're thinking about the impact that their travel has on the environment so uh, you know companies that are um, conscious about that like for example I think we're the only hotel group in the world who's banned imported bottled water so no six senses property has um, imported bottled water you can't find a bottle of Evian or Vittel or anything like that I mean some of our competitors actually advertise elaborate water menus we've gone the opposite where we actually have our bottling plant on the resort um, we then remineralize the water and then you can actually pour it across crystals which changes the shape of the water, so it becomes, we call it wellness water. There's a, um, a great Japanese called Emaru Moto, who actually took photos of water crystals, and he shows um, how, you know, well-treated water, you know, made when you know, music's playing and so on, has beautiful crystal shape. So we believe it's healing. Uh, we did tests the, with the mineralizer. We have the same minerals as most other waters, like San Benedetto or Pellegrino and so on. Uh, but of course, it's it's made locally. Yeah, the bottles are recycled. There are bottling plant. So, 70% of our resorts have that, and then a few resorts have um, local water where they buy in from a local supplier because they haven't managed to buy the bottling plant yet. And um, so that's that's another example of intelligent luxury where it's you know the guests are actually getting health, healthier water, and you know we're having lower impact on the environment. And in fact, we sell the water to our guests. And half of that actually goes towards helping people in developed economies um, ac have access to fresh water. So I think, you know, that way people feel that, okay, they're drinking the water, but they're actually helping others who don't. Whereas, you know, you, you buy a bottle of Evian, all you've done is you created waste in terms of plastic bottles. And, um, and you've helped a, bottling, a bottle company, but you haven't really helped 
people who are suffering and you know don't have access to water, which is nearly a billion people in the world. Um, now, with the economic downturn, do you see that almost as a good that? It's almost refocusing minds to say that bling is almost slightly passe and you need to think more innovatively and you yeah. can have luxury without just writing out a blank check and yeah. spending on it. I think on so. Energy. I think people are more conscious now and I think that's all very positive um, um, and, and it, it's great that that's happening. The only tragedy, of course, is the oil prices dropped. Uh, you know, high oil prices were a great impetus in terms of, you know, uh, supporting renewable energy and, um, and, and so on. So... Um, but that, that's an issue. But it's great to see what governments are doing in terms of, you know, like the American government in terms of their sort of green economy drive and focus. So fortunately, the governments are really coming behind this green drive. So even with low oil prices, I don't think we're going to get to a situation which we had before where people just ignore uh, the need for more sustainable ways of life. Okay, Sonal, thank, thank you very you. much for joining us at WTTC. Thank you.